Hello and welcome to Cole Red Plays Raid Shadow Legends. I am Cole Red. Thank you for joining me. I have dived deep into the Wix well over the last 48 hours. In fact, I have dodged, dipped, ducked, dived, and dodged my way through this Vault Keeper Wix well Infinity Clan Boss team so that you don't have to. Now, there are a lot of variations of this team. I'm here to tell you they are not all equally viable. However, the good news is that because there are so many, it's highly likely that you have at least one or more combinations of champions that are going to work for this Infinity Clan Boss team and get you that one key Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss result. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through everything you need to know to pick a good speed tune and then tweak it so that it's perfect and that you can get the result that you want. There's a lot to cover. I hope you stick around for it. It's gonna be worth it. Let's get started. For those of you who don't know, I am a completely 100% free to play player. I am also not part of the content creator program. That means when I do videos like this that require a lot of research and a lot of resources, I'm spending my own free to play resources to bring this content to you. So I would really appreciate it if for videos like this, you make sure to hit that like button. Always you are invited to subscribe to the channel if you are interested in that. And also consider joining our Discord community. It's an absolutely fantastic community and you can use it as a resource to ask questions, get advice, even find a clan to come and play with. Thanks so much for all the support. Now let's get back to the video. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Infinity Clan Boss team compositions, I highly recommend you go and watch my video from yesterday. In that video, I describe what an Infinity team is, the theory behind it, how it works, uh, some champions you can use to build one, some considerations when speed tuning. So that's really gonna answer all the questions you need to follow what's going to happen in this video. But if you've watched that one or you're just up to date on Infinity Clan Boss teams anyway, you should have no problem following what happens in today's video. But like I said, I highly recommend you go and watch that if you haven't yet, or if you just don't understand the concept behind Infinity Team. Now, just as a quick note or reminder, basically the Infinity Team is built around the idea of extending buffs infinitely, right? So we add buff extender champions to the team. And so we apply a buff once, and then rather than letting it expire and reapplying it the way you would with like a normal composition, you use the buff extenders to keep that buff up indefinitely. Now, the reason that's important is because most infinity comps are built around under priest Brogni here, or prior to Wixwell, they were at least. And that's because of his A2. So is A2 grows shields. It increases the value of shield buffs on all allies by 30% of the damage that the skill inflicts. And so what can happen is if the shield buffs that you have never expire, any growth that you get from this A2 compounds upon any growth that you've had previously, right? So if you have a shield constantly expiring and reapplying, then the growth doesn't matter that much. But if the shield never expires, then it can keep growing and growing and growing every time this A2 is applied. And that can allow you to build massively huge shields that will allow you to stay alive against the clan boss for potentially hundreds of turns. So that is sort of the idea behind most infinity teams is to grow the shield and give yourself a lot of survivability. The good news is that Wixwell also does this, but he is also a buff extender. So let's go look at Wixwell really quickly. So here is Vault Keeper Wixwell. And as you can see, his A2 also grows shields. But this also increases the duration of all ally buffs by one turn. So what Wixwell allows you to do is not use up an extra spot in your five champion team composition for another buff extender. He is the buff extender and the shield growth champion. And as a result, um, he gives you more flexibility to build your compositions. In addition, his shield is grown differently than Brogni's, right? Brogni's shield growth happens based on 30% of the damage his skill does. But for Wixwell, you can see here, the value of each shield is increased proportional to the number of buffs which had their duration increased. And so as a result, the more buffs you have, the larger that shield is going to grow, and it doesn't matter how much damage you do. So this is a multiplier. This multiplies your shield, whereas Brogni's shield is more additive. It just adds a certain amount to it. 
Now, I will say this right at the beginning of this video or close to the beginning of this video. If you have both of these champions, you really don't need to watch any more of this video. I will put together a team that uses Brogni at the end of this video, probably, or in another video soon. But basically, if you have both champions, it's really easy. Put them together, pick any speed tune you like, and it's going to work because the combination of the additive shields of Brogni and the multiplicative shields of Wixwell are just so powerful that you can run a one-to-one -one speed tune with almost any buff extenders that you want, and you're just totally fine. It doesn't really matter even what the damage dealer is because Brogni is going to hit hard enough to get you your one key Ultra Nightmare result. So if you have both of those champions, just go ahead and build any tune that you like with them right now, and you're probably done. However, if you only have one of these champions, I want to explain why their shield growth mechanics are different and how that affects the, the way you put together your team composition. So it's really important that you understand how each of these skills works. Let's go ahead and check that out now. Okay, here's a little graph I put together to describe the interactions of these skills with the clan boss's ramping damage. Now, the clan boss's damage line here over time is not, it's not a straight line, it's a curve. And the reason is because the damage gets multiplied by a percentage. So it's a compound interest problem or an acceleration curve, but each hit does a percentage more damage than the previous hit, which does a percentage more damage than the previous hit. And as a result, it's not a straight line, but a curve. However, Brogni's increase is not a curve, right? So if we take this green line here, this is gonna be Brogni's shield growth. First of all, we're going to start it above the red line because the shield needs to survive, right? The shield needs to be bigger than the amount of damage you take from the first hit. There has to be a gap here or else the shield will be destroyed and there will be no shield growth. And speaking of no shield growth, let's say, you know, Brogni was hitting like a wet noodle and basically did no damage. You would basically have a really flat line here, right? And what would happen is your initial shield wouldn't really grow very much. It would just kind of be whittled down and then eventually the damage will run past it. Now, this point here where the two intersect, where the shield intersects with the damage of the clan boss, that isn't the moment the shield is destroyed. That is the moment when the shield starts to be destroyed, where it starts to get smaller rather than larger. Right, so prior to this point, the shield's been getting larger and now it's getting smaller. So that means somewhere up here is where maybe the team will actually die. So you do get a little bit of extra, you know, in terms of life sustaining your turns, uh, unless the clan boss basically one shots you, in which case you don't get any extra duration. Now, the goal with Brogni's shield would be to have him hitting as hard as possible, as frequently as possible, so that you can make this as steep a line as possible. The steeper the line, the harder Brogni is hitting, or the more frequently is hitting, or both. Now, the goal here would be to extend the life, definitely past the 50 turn limit that the unkillable clan boss teams get, um, but you're probably also doing less damage per turn, so you want to extend it fairly far. So it, the further that you can extend this, the better off you are. So again, the intersection point, the further you can push that to the right, the more turns you've taken, the more damage you've done, and the longer you'll survive after this point as well, because the shield is pretty big at this point, so you might survive all the way to up here, you know, get another 10 turns or something. And that is the way most Brogni teams work. You build the shield up as big as possible, and then they start to get it whittled away. But if you build them up big enough, you might hit the 1500 turn limit uh, of the clan boss of any fight, and that's going to be the maximum amount of damage that you can do. Wixwell's shield is different. Again, we're going to be starting from the same point. We want to have some gap over the damage number of the clan boss so the shield survives. But Wixwell's damage uh, or shield growth is not a line, it's a curve. It's also a curve because his is also a compound interest problem. He's increasing it by a certain percentage. Now, depending on the way that this works, you might have too flat a curve, right? So you might have something like this, in which case, even though it would be increasing, you intersect down here and the shield starts to get destroyed and it doesn't grow anymore, right? It just, at that point, you're not going very far. But the cool thing is if you can actually get this curve to build fast enough, early enough, you can actually match or even improve upon the curve of the clan boss. So you could do something like this. Now, what that means is 
the clan boss will literally never catch you. It doesn't matter if you hit the 1500 turn limit or if they eliminated that. You could go a million turns, but your shield is increasing faster than the clan boss's damage is increasing. Imagine that the clan boss is increasing his damage by 5% every turn, but you're increasing your shield by 6% every turn. So as long as your base number is higher or the same, right? If your shield is larger than the amount of damage that you take initially, then you're just going to keep growing larger and larger and larger. Now, I know that there's a little bit of a difference between the way this graph works and the way the actual damage graph works, because these won't be straight lines. They'll actually be a bunch of little kind of like saw teeth, because what's going to happen is you're going to have a shield and it's going to be hit by the clan boss. And then it's going to go up an amount, and then it's going to be hit by the clan boss. And then it's going to be go, go up an amount, and it's going to be hit by the clan boss. So that's the way the lines actually work. But again, if you can grow faster than the clan boss can knock the damage down, then every peak is going to be a little bit higher than the previous peak, and it'll never be knocked down more, right? Um... With Wixwell, with Brogni, you could actually get knocked down because what's happening is that these drops are getting bigger every time. So you keep going up the same amount, but then the drops get bigger, and then you go up the same amount, and the drops get bigger, and then you go up the same amount, and then the drops get really big, and eventually you're going down, right? But with Wixwell, that won't happen. As long as you get ahead of the curve, you will stay ahead of the curve permanently, like this blue line stays ahead of that red line. Now, in order to do that, we need to know exactly what affects the size of the shield increase. How can we maximize Wixwell's shield increase? All right, so here are the Wixwell shield growth factors. There are four of them. And these are pretty simple. You're gonna understand these right away, but it's good to know that there are a lot of things that can go into effectively growing Wixwell's shield. The first is the initial shield size. Now, Wixwell's shield size is based on his defense. So the higher his defense stat, the better off you're going to be. This is why using a defense aura can actually help this team because you can even grow his shield more by artificially inflating his defense stat. But I would highly recommend getting to at least 5k defense on Wixwell. If you can push beyond that, that's awesome. But more defense on Wixwell means a larger initial shield size. The second factor is that the shield reduction that happens from the clan boss attacks cuts into like your base number that you're multiplying. Right, So the more damage your shield takes, the smaller that multiplication is going to be. Imagine you have a shield that's 10,000 and you're multiplying it by 10%. That means you're getting an additional 100, right? You're, you're adding 100 to that shield. If you're adding 20%, you're adding 200 to that shield. If you're adding 50%, you're adding 500 to that shield. But also, if that initial shield is a lot larger, if the shield starts at 10,000, then 10% 10 is a thousand increase. So. The initial shield size matters, but also we don't want it to take a big hit. The bigger the hit it takes, the less we have to work with. So there are a lot of things that can reduce the amount of damage that your shield takes. The first is all of your champions need to be built with defense. HP does not matter on your champions for this speed tune, right? You don't care about HP at all, except on the champion that's wearing the shield set. So you're gonna bring a second set uh, or a second shield from a shield set and that champion needs high hp but still needs very good defense okay so you cannot ignore defense here you need to be stacking defense on every champion defensive based champions are going to be better off uh in this team composition the second thing is you need to put debuffs on your clan boss decrease attack is the most important but decrease crit rate and decrease crit damage can also help but you want 100 percent uptime on decrease attack buffs on your champions will matter and we're talking about damage mitigation buffs. So increased defense and strengthen are the most important. Um, veil or perfect veil can help too. Remember that those give damage mitigation. You can also use ally protect, but I would be very careful with an ally protector because that champion's going to be need, need to be extremely tanky so that their shield doesn't get broken. Because as soon as one shield gets broken, that champion's eventually going to die and that's going to end your run. So I would avoid ally protection if you can. And honestly, you don't need it. In addition, the last factor here for reducing the amount of damage your shield takes is additional mitigations from gear and or passive abilities. So a guardian set could help. That's like a mini ally protect, and it's probably not too dangerous to use at least one guardian set. In addition, you could use stalwart set or 
Any set that really reduces the amount of damage that you take is good. You can also have passive abilities. Any champions that have passives that reduce the amount of damage you take, that's going to be hugely helpful. So think like Duchess's passive that reduces incoming damage from bosses by 15%. That's perfect. The third growth factor is the frequency of Wixwell actually firing off his A2 ability. So the faster the speed tune, the more often he fires his ability. So you want to do that as often as possible. So in this particular case, like a one-to-one -one speed tune can work okay, especially if you have Brogni and Wixwell, but a faster tune is going to work better. That's why most of the successful teams that Hal Hades used were two-to-one ratio teams, because that's going to allow Wixwell to fire his growth twice per three attacks of the clan boss, and that's really important. Another way you can get that skill to fire more frequently is to reduce its cooldown. So refresh accessories, reflex and impulse sets, the cycle of magic mastery, and any cooldown reduction skills from any other champions, like, you know, let's say a pain keeper or something that like could help. Pain keeper's not gonna work, by the way. You would, it would have to be, I think it would have to be Yumiko. I think realistically it has to be Yumiko or Kaimar. I don't think pain keeper is gonna help unless you have two of them. And then I don't know if you're gonna get the damage, right? So. Um, but you could use cooldown reduction skills. But Reflex absolutely works. Impulse works. Cycle of Magic works. So then he's firing it off more because his cooldown is coming up faster. Okay, the fourth growth factor is the magnitude of Wixwell's shield multiplier. Now, his multiplier is based on the number of team buffs that have their duration increased by his A2. Remember, a buff like his Intercept can't have a duration extended because it doesn't have a duration. Likewise, uh, the buff from, say, a bolster set can't have its duration increased. So that's not, you don't want to bring a bolster set in here. But the more buffs that you can get on your team, and it doesn't even matter what the buffs are. It could be like increased accuracy, and you don't even need the increased accuracy, but that just adds to the number of buffs that are being factored in to the magnitude of Wixwell's A2. So... The more buffs you can bring, the better. Now I want to talk about some actual speed tunes that people out there may be trying that I don't think are good ideas. I want you to avoid these compositions because they're going to be problematic. And in fact, there are so many good options. I promise you there's going to be another option that works better later in the video. So I want to start with a one-to-one -one speed tune. Now I put together a one-to-one -one speed tune here. I tried to put together the most free-to-play friendly version I could think of. So obviously Wixwell is the fusion champion. Spirit Host is our block debuffs champion. Um, so we need her. Weirdly enough, we don't want to delay there. Okay. So Spirit, Spirit Host is the block debuffs champion. Valerie is a farmable buff extender. Spirit Host is a farmable block debuffs champion. So these three champions are all farmable in campaign. And then Razin is a fusion, a permanent fusion that everybody can get. Although this is the least important role. This is just your damage dealer. You can literally use any champion here. You could use your starter champion. You could use Frozen Banshee. You could use whoever you have. The reason I used Razin is because one, everybody can get him. Two, he has a weaken and a decreased defense, which are going to boost our damage. Three, he's a defensive based champion, which is going to make our team tankier. And then four, he um, can remove the increased attack buff that some versions of the clan boss get so that increased attack buff needs to be removed to not hurt our shields as much now i will tell you right away this speed tune doesn't work i tried it it just doesn't work for a couple of reasons but basically what happens is the shield will be broken probably in somewhere between 10 and 20 turns and then you're gone right and the reason is these rares aren't typically tanky they're just not tanky enough. So getting enough defensive stats on them. Remember, defense, not HP. We don't care about HP. But getting enough defensive stats on them uh, is hard. In addition, we've only got four... We've got 21 buffs that are being extended, right? Each champion has four. Wixwell has a fifth because he has his counterattack. Again, remember that his intercept buff can't be extended. So we have 21 buffs here. That's not enough. It's not enough. We need more buffs here. We don't have enough defenses. Also, we don't have like a strengthen. We don't have any additional mitigations, and we're going so slow that Volkeeper Wixwell isn't firing off his A2 ability often enough. So what I will say is this will work if you have very specific champions. 
if you have Brogni, you're fine. Just go ahead and put in Brogni for Spirit Host. Right, put him in right here. Again, in this particular case, you want to make sure that he uses his block D bus first, which is A3, and then you can turn it off in the AI. And then it'll be up permanently. And then he just needs to fire off his, his A2 as often as possible. So what's going to happen here is now you're getting two shield growths, right? You're getting a shield growth from Wixwell and you're getting a shield growth from Brogni. And those two together just overcome all of the other issues. You still need to build your Valerie's tanky. You still need to be, build your buff extenders tanky. Everybody needs to be tanky. But this is enough. This is enough damage. Brogni will one key Ultra Nightmare for you with his HP burn and his A2. And this is more than enough to get it done. This is the only version of like a one-to-one -one team that I think is really easy. And it, you have to have Brogni. Right. Otherwise, you could do a couple of other things. You could throw in some different champions here to give you more mitigations. If you use Geomancer as your damage dealer, he's going to give you additional mitigations. If you use Corvus as a buff extender, he's going to give you additional mitigations. So you have ways to get more mitigations into the team. And if you have God tier gear and you have all these champions, you could potentially do it. But if you have the God tier gear and you have the champions, you don't need to do this weak ass speed tune. You can do a much better speed tune. Trust me. So this is not a great speed tune, but it is a relatively friendly speed tune. If you have Brogni just by luck of the draw, right? If you just have Brogni by luck of the draw, you can make this work. Just go farm yourself two Valerie's if you don't have anybody else, a Raz and Scarhide if you don't have anybody else, or any damage dealer and any buff extenders. Doesn't matter. Now, more commonly, I think uh, a better speed tune in terms of getting the job done is the two to one speed tune utilizing High Katoon, right? Now, there's a speed tune also with Apothecary. Now, there is a problem with these two speed tunes. The benefit is they're very accessible, right? You can see here that High Katoon's a free champion. Again, we could farm two Valerie's if we wanted, or in this case, a Hellborn Sprite is another rare who's very good, uh, and a buff extender on a three turn cooldown. So we've got our three buff extenders. And then in this case, it's Geomancer and Vault Keeper Wixwell. I think this team will work great, but it only works on two affinities. And I want to show you why. Without a block debuffs buff, we are relying on the intercept from Wixwell to block the stun of the clan boss. However, this intercept will always go on the lead champion. And Haikatoon needs to be the lead in this speed tune which means she will always get the intercept buff. Now, she will only be the stun target on Void Affinity and on Magic Affinity. On Spirit Affinity and Force Affinity, it's going to be different targets. So as a result, this is only two Affinity friendly. It's not good for all four Affinity. So as much as I like this speed tune, really, again, the, the way to make this work is to put Brogni in as your damage dealer. Make Brogni in here instead of Geomancer. You get the block debuff buff up. Now it's fully affinity friendly. And again, Brogni will have more than enough damage to get you the one key, especially in a two to one speed tune. And you really don't have to worry about like the shield growth as much because now you have two shield growers going twice every, you know, three turns. So it's really, that would be super effective. So if you like this speed tune and you have Brogni, go ahead and do it. If you don't have Brogni, I would say you want to avoid this speed tune. You also probably want to avoid the Apothecary speed tune. That one's a little bit better because you can manipulate turn order more easily without the need for the speed aura. Uh, but you're still going to have to come up with multiple variations to make that team work for all of the different affinity. Okay, so who's better then? Well, we have a bunch of different speed tunes. You can basically use almost any speed tune, and I will get to some speed tunes later on. But I do want to talk about some champions, and let's start with the buff duration champions. So these are all the increased buff duration champions that are in the game here on hellhades.com. And you can see Valerie and Hellborn Sprite are the two rare. So those are the most accessible, but there are some others that are also accessible. I'm not going to mention every single one, but I will mention a few that I like. I like Sandlashed Survivor because she is a defensive based champion. And so you can build her really tanky and that's gonna work just great. She doesn't bring a lot other than that. Um, but if you need more tankiness on your team, she's pretty good. I like Anchorite. Anchorite is actually, he's decently tanky as well. Um, he has a larger HP pool, which makes him a good choice for your shield set. 
although his defensive stat is not awesome. So you will want to pile defense on him, but make you can make him potentially your shield champion. The reason I like him is because in his buff extension, uh, in addition to his buff extension, he has an increased crit rate and increased crit damage. So you can actually fire this off first and then extend the buffs on the next turn and you'll have an increased crit rate buff and an increased crit damage buff, which not only will help you like build your champions because you don't need 100% crit rate, it'll help you do more damage because of the increased crit damage and it gives you two more buffs on your team that'll help you grow your Wixwell shield. So I really like Anchorite as uh, uh, one of your buff extenders. I think he's one of the best epic options. Perhaps the best epic option is actually Demitha, and it might seem weird to use Demitha in a non-unkillable team, right? Because she's the unkillable, like, queen. But she's very tanky. She's nice and tanky with 1,288 defense and 19,000 HP. Again, you could put her in a shield set. You can still use her block damage buff to reduce the amount of damage that your shields take, especially on the very first turn. You can make sure that you take no damage to your shield on turn one. Uh, and that could be really nice. That allows you to multiply your shield really easily. In addition, she does put out some continuous heal buffs, which are going to give you a few more buffs. She's also Void Affinity, so that makes it easier in terms of stun targeting. So Demitha is great, but if you have Demitha, you, you may already have your one key Ultra Nightmare, and so you're not worried about that. As far as legendaries are concerned, um, there are several Krisk, and Lanicus are two that actually go into the kind of classic Brogni Infinity team. If you have those two champions, you can use them, absolutely, but they require a different speed tune. It's a more complicated speed tune. Oella is pretty good, but by far, by far the best legendary champion in the game to pair up with Wixwell as a buff extender is Corvus. Now, Corvus does so many things that work for this Wixwell team. First of all, on his A1, he has a decrease attack chance. So that means in addition to Wixwell's de decrease attack, you have a decrease attack on an A1 on a different affinity because Corvus is magic affinity, whereas Wixwell is force affinity. So that synergizes really well. He has an increased defense aura in all battles by 30%, which is larger than Wixwell by 2%. So you got a good aura. His A2, which is his buff extension, also increases the duration of enemy debuffs. So it will extend the duration of those decreased attacks. It'll extend the duration of any weakens or decreased defenses or any other debuffs you put out there, including his poisons and his poison sensitivity. So of all the buff extenders, he's going to do the most damage that in is including all of the legendaries and all of the epics and rares. He's by far going to be the hardest hitting. And then finally, on top of all of that, he's got curious draft, draft, curious draw, curious draft as his passive which decreases the damage enemies under poison debuffs inflict. 5% less damage per poison. So if you have five poisons up, the clan boss does 25% less damage. So in addition, he also brings that extra mitigation we were talking about. This is by far the best regular buff extender that there is in the game for this particular purpose. There's one more, however, that isn't actually on this list. I don't know why it's on this list, Hell Hades, if you watch this video. Put this lady on the list, and that is Lady Makage. Lady Makage has the same skill as Corvus. Her A2 decreases the duration of enemy and ally debuffs, and then increases the duration of enemy debuffs and ally buffs. So you increase your buffs, and you increase the duration of the enemy buffs, just like Corvus does. In addition, this will actually also help get that buff, that increased attack buff, off the clan boss more quickly. So this is really good. She does give an increased attack buff and an increased crit damage buff. So again, this is a skill you're actually going to leave on because it's her ally attack. So she's bringing an ally attack, increased attack, increased crit damage, that buff extension and all that stuff. So I would say if you have your Lady Makage yet, you're going to want her in the team as well. She's going to bring a ton of damage, but she's also going to bring a lot of utility and she's going to help Wixwell grow that shield. Now, in addition to increasing buff durations, in order to go fully affinity friendly, you either need a cleanser or you need a block debuff buff. Now, a block debuff buff is by far the easiest because you fire it off once and then the buff extensions keep it up infinitely, just like the shield is kept up infinitely. So as far as the de uh, block debuff champions are concerned, you can really use anybody. 
but you want to consider bringing a champion that brings additional buffs or additional debuffs that you need. So for instance, Spirit Host we talked about is a free champion. She brings, um, you know, that block debuff. She also brings an increased attack if you want to use it. Man Eater is really nice because on his A1, if he crits, he has a decreased attack. So you're going to get close to 100% uptime on Man Eater as a decreased attack champion. Again, may feel weird using him because he's an unkillable champ. Under Priest Brogni is by far the best. So if you have him, you're using him. But I do want to mention a couple of legendaries that you can consider. I really like Tatura Rhymehide because he also brings that perfect veil, as does Duchess. Duchess is even better, brings that perfect veil, and she has a passive damage mitigation as well. So her passive, let's see. Yeah, decreases the damage taken by all allies from AoE attacks by 15% from bosses. So again, 15% damage off the top of every attack. Not as good as Corvus's, but it's not as conditional, right? Corvus needs those poisons out there. I'll also mention Elva Autumnborn. Elva brings a speed aura and a speed boost. So you can use her to get to a two to one uh, speed tune without the need to use someone like High Katoon. So she, she's a replacement for a High Katoon, but she also brings the block debuffs buff, which is really nice. She also brings some continuous heals, so that's going to increase the multiplier on Wixwell's A2. And finally, you have Cardiel. Cardiel, like Elva, brings that speed aura, but doesn't bring an increased speed buff. Um, so he's not going to allow you to go to two to one, but he will alleviate the pressure on your stats, on your speed stats, and that might allow you to build more defense in your champions. Um, so he also has an ally attack, and he's got a lot of buffs as well. Increased crit rate, increased crit damage and block debuffs. His revive on death is not going to be extended, so that's not gonna factor in. Okay, so now I just wanna talk about a couple of speed tunes I've actually tried on my account. I wanted to build a relatively cheap, free-to-play friendly team based on champions that I already had, and I didn't wanna have to rebuild too many. I've spent like 50 million silver on this video and about 2,500 gems. So uh, definitely don't forget to hit the like button. But, um, but yeah, so this was the first one I started with. I brought in Man Eater here um, because he was already built at the speed that I needed. He's going to bring me that decrease attack on his A1. He's going to hit really hard, and he's going to bring me the block debuffs buff. So he's in the block debuffs spot. In addition, I did bring Hellborn Sprite because she brings um, the increased crit rate, 15% increased crit rate. That's going to help a little bit in terms of build. It's also going to be an extra buff. Sandlash Survivor because she's tanky and I already had her built. So these were the two six star buff extenders that I had other than Demitha and Godseeker and Neri. And I didn't want to bring in one of those two, right? Because I feel like if you have those two, first of all, you're going to use Godseeker elsewhere. You're not going to use her in this composition. And if you have Demitha, you probably already have a Demitha team. So you're not going to use her in this composition either. And then I brought in Razin again as my damage dealer for that weakened decreased defense and buff removal and also his in inherent tankiness. Now you can see my speed tune is not a one-to-one -one speed tune. In fact, I created a four to three speed tune. So I have four champions going at four to three. Razin is going at one to one. Razin can go slower. It doesn't matter if he goes slower. All the buff extenders need to go at the same speed. Maneater could go slower as well, um, but it, he was already built. So that's why he's running this fast. So if you look at all of these turns, what you'll see is it's five in the right column, it's six in, I'm sorry, it's five in the left column, six attacks or six actions in the right column, and then I believe it is eight in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so as a result, we're taking 19 actions instead of 15. 15 is a one to one, and a four to three for everybody technically would be 20, right? But we're doing 19. So Razin is not going, he's going at a one to one. Now, I ran this, and I came close. So I'm going to take you into my account, and I'm going to show you this team. Okay, so here is the team, and I'm going to show you the stats on the champions. Um, remember that these stats do factor in the area bonuses. Uh, I don't really have many area bonuses, but this is all factored in. So you can see Wixwell is running at 273, just over 5,000 defense. Again, HP doesn't matter, but defense does. I didn't want to like overshoot with crazy numbers here because I know that, you know, I have a lot of free to play viewers. I did try to make this work, 
without putting crazy god tier gear on it and it i've come close so i do believe that this is viable but it's going to be tricky um so what happens here is man eaters at 270 you can see 100 crit rate he doesn't need 100 crit rate remember that hellborn brings a 15 percent increased crit rate so you can build him at 85 percent sandlash survivor is at 4.4k defense uh hellborn is at 3.1k defense and then razin is at 3.5k defense now what happens when i run this against magic affinity is that survivor sandlash survivor i made her the stun target against magic right she is the weak affinity champion that is highest in the turn order so she's going to be targeted the problem is that her shield breaks first her shield breaks Everybody else's shield gets to the sort of um, critical mass, right? It gets to the point where it will just grow forever, but hers does not because she's taking three hits instead of two hits. And so I think if I were going to build her just with defensive stats, I would probably need her over 5,000, maybe even 5,500 to get her where she needs to be. Basically, there is definitely a point where it's like, if, if, the shield is decreasing very slightly. You're going to lose the shield. If the shield is increasing very slightly, then you're going to keep it. You know, like that's the way it works because it's as long as you get ahead of the curve, it doesn't matter how much you increase it by as long as you're always increasing it a little bit more than the damage is coming in. And she just like if it weren't for the stun, she'd be fine. But she takes the third hit. So I do think there are two things that I could consider with this team that might make it work. One is to put Sandlash Survivor in a stalwart set, right? If I could get all the same numbers on her, but get her in a stalwart set so she takes 30% less damage from AoE 1 and AoE 2, then I think that could potentially get her over the hump. I also think I could put somebody else in a Guardian set. The most likely candidate would actually be Wixwell himself. Or maybe Razin. I could put one of these two champions in a Guardian set, and maybe that mini ally protect would be enough to let Sandlass Survivor build up her shield without, for instance, destroying Razin's shield. But I would need higher defense on Razin in that set. You can see I've actually built him here for damage with 88% crit rate. That'll get him to 100% with the buff, and then 278% crit damage. So I was really pushing the damage here, not the survivability, but I probably don't need this damage. I could probably go back, rebuild him fully defensively, maybe in a Guardian set, or maybe even do both. Put Sandlashed in a, a Stalwart set and Razin in a Guardian set. Now, what's going to happen here is against Spirit Affinity, Wixwell should be the target. And Wixwell will have the intercept on him, so we don't have to worry so much about like that, that whatever. But Wixwell is the tankiest champion. So if he can't survive being the stun target, if taking three hits actually breaks his shield, then this is not a viable, like, full affinity solution, right? Like, you can't... I would, I would have to make him as tanky. I'd have to get him up to 6k, maybe put him in a stalwart set, try that, maybe that would work. So I do think this is, like, possible. If you have Geomancer, you're probably okay. You put Geomancer in for Razin, and the additional 15% damage mitigation may be enough even without these changes. So you can look at the stats here and see if you have a build that's similar to this one. This one is pretty good. You don't need Hellborn. You don't need Survivor. You can use two, any two buff extenders. Again, more buffs helps. So I think, for instance, if I had um, Anchorite, Anchorite here could, could help because he has more buffs. Um, I could swap out Hellborn and get you know somebody else, or I could do Survivor, swap out Hellborn and do Survivor and Anchorite. Uh, that could potentially be better. So. More buffs would be better, and then those swaps with the defensive sets. But these stats with just regular sets without a stalwart set and without a guardian set are not enough. However, as soon as I failed, I, I tried for several hours to make this work. As soon as I failed, I said, you know what? I have Brogni. Let's go ahead and try Brogni and see if this works. And again, this is a four to three composition, uh, so not much faster than a one to one composition. In this particular case, you want to. Use uh, Brogni's, sorry, is it his resilient glow? You want him to open with this, I believe. And then you're going to turn this off. And then this is going to be the first choice. As far as Wixwell is concerned, I do, in fact, open with his shield. Now, here's the thing is, 
If his shield is smaller than Brogni's shield, Brogni's shield will replace it, but you don't care. Whichever shield is bigger is the one you want. If Brogni's shield isn't bigger, since they're firing on the same turn, duration won't change it. Like the longer duration won't switch it, right? So it's just the bigger shield will survive. So you don't really care about the fact that they both have a shield. You do, in fact, want the increased defense from Wixwell. You don't need his intercept, right? We have Brogni's block debuffs, so you don't need to use the intercept at all. Now, this team works fine. So we're going to go ahead and show you this team. And I will say this. It worked fine against um, Magic Affinity. Now we're, vo now we're Force Affinity here. Now Brogni is going to be the stun target. And Brogni is not particularly tanky. Let me show you my Brogni for a second. Here he is. You can see he's in offensive stats. He does have 3k defense. Right? He just has over 3k defense. Not very tanky, though. So it's potentially possible that Brogni's shield will break, but I don't think so. I'm not going to use quick battle. I'm going to go ahead and just start this, and we'll, sh we'll show you how the team order works so you, you can see this unfold. So Wixwell is going to start, and he's going to give everybody a second shield. This first shield is the shield set that we have on, I believe we have it on Sandlash Survivor. So, uh, yeah, so now we're going to get the second shield and the increased defense and the counterattack on Wixwell. Now we're going to get the Brogni buffs. Now, this is the other nice thing about Brogni. He brings an increased attack. So now we have five buffs on everybody instead of the four we had before when we had Maneater in. So not only is Brogni also multiplying the shield himself, but when Wixwell multiplies the shield, it's going to have more buffs to make that A2 even more effective. Now we get the increased crit rate buff. So now we're up to six. Actually, up to six buffs. Oh, I forgot. That four that we were saying before, we weren't counting the shield buff. So this should be only one more buff than before. And now Razin hopefully can remove that increased attack buff. He did. And that's going to help. And now we grow the shield from Wixwell. And now we grow the shield from Brogni. So we get back-to-back -back shield growth. They will be firing those skills the same turn. It would actually work better if Brogni went first. I could change that turn order. Um, like if I change the speeds, if I could get Brogni faster, if Brogni goes first, then you get the Brogni additive shield that's then multiplied by Wixwell. That would be better. Uh, so if you're doing this, what I would say is try to switch those two. Right? You can just run Brogni at 272 and Wixwell at 271 and it would work with this speed tune. But as you can see, the shields are getting larger. So Brogni is the shield that we have to watch out for. Everybody is either neutral or strong affinity except for Brogni. So he's going to get hit the hardest, and he's also going to take the stun attack. So he's going to get three, hit three times, where everybody else is getting hit two times. But is, if his shield keeps growing, uh, then we're, we're going to be fine. Now, I'm not running a reflex set. I'm not running any refresh accessories. I am running Cycle of Magic on Wixwell, but that's only a 5% chance. Um, if you get that 5% chance early, it could really help, but honestly, you don't need to run Cycle of Magic, because if Cycle of Magic makes the difference, then the speed tune isn't viable, right? So, you could definitely run a Reflex set, that could help, but again, I think the RNG basis of Reflex, of Cycle of Magic, of Refresh Accessories, really make it so that you're introducing some uncertainty. Unless you're running all of that on both Brogni and Wixwell, there's no point in running any of it on Brogni or Wixwell. It's either you need so much of it that you almost guarantee it to work so that it's going to succeed 98% of the time, or you need it to succeed 100% of the time without those refresh accessories or, or sets. So as you can see, the shield is getting nice and big here. By the way, the damage output's pretty solid. I do have enough accuracy on both Wixwell and Brogni to land their debuffs. So Wixwell is landing the decrease attack. And Brogni is landing the HP burn. And both of those are helping. Um, so obviously the decrease attack is really important, at least for the first few turns. And the HP burn is going to add damage over the long haul. All right, so that is it for my team. I know that I'm using Brogni here. I, again, I'm going to do another team. This was just the interim video. I am aiming for an even better team than this. I'm going to bring in my Corvus. I'm going to bring in my Lady Makage. I might bring in my Cardia. I don't know. I'm going to go crazy. We're going to bring in a lot of really great champions. 
We're going to make this team absolutely insane. But again, I don't think you need Brogny here. If you have Geomancer, put in Geomancer for Razin instead. And I don't think you need Brogny. You can run Spirit Host even, and that might work. Um, you just need that extra damage mitigation. And again, think about your Stalwart sets and your Guardian sets and mess around with those if you don't have Brogny or you don't have Duchess or you don't have Geo, or even if you do, you can try them. Guarantee yourself success here. It looks like this shield is so large now. This is, this is a runaway. Now we know, basically, we've gotten to turn 15 here, and the shield is still growing, so it should permanently grow, and we should hit the turn limit here. So I'm just going to let this play in the background. I'll come back when it's over, and uh, we'll finish out this video. There we go. Turn limit reached 204.6 million damage dealt. Did take almost an hour, 50 minutes. Uh, yeah. So again, you know, here we have a rare. We have Survivor, not... Not great champions, not phenomenal champions, but Under Priest Brogni did 91 million on his own. So this just goes to show, like, all, all you need is Brogni. If you have Brogni and Wixwell, you're good. If you don't have Brogni, if you look at Raz in here, 56 million, and Wixwell, the two of them did enough damage on their own. Again, we have Survivor there with 21 million as well. So it's, it's not going to be difficult to get the damage you need, right? One good damage dealer with Wixwell is enough. Like, even one decent damage dealer with Wixwell is enough. What you really need is you need to get full affinity, friendly, full auto, so that you can quick battle it, and then you don't have to wait for 50 minutes to get this done. So I think, you know, Hellborn is fine. Any, any, Valerie is fine. Any two buff extenders with Wixwell are going to be fine. Bring in, you know, a, a good block debuffs champion. And then a damage dealer who does some work. Now, this is a 4-3 speed tune. So that's, that should be achievable for everybody for the most part. You could do a 1-1 -to -one with this team. I think that would work as well. Um, because I think Under Priest Brogni and, and Wixwell together are good. But for a 1-to-1 -one -one team, you're really going to need extra mitigations. Or you're going to need Brogni to bring in those extra shield growth. So unless you have Geo, unless you have Duchess, unless you have Corvus or somebody to really give you a lot of extra damage mitigation. You're going to have to play around with some really high defense numbers, some, you know, defensive sets like potentially Guardian set or um, Stalwart set to give yourself extra mitigations. Consider bringing in a Strength and Champion. You know, that's something that you could do. Instead of Razin here, potentially you could bring in like a, um, a Morag Bronze Lock, right? She brings in that Strength and that Strength and might be enough to give you, that's 25% damage mitigation right there. So you could stack up mitigations, get more buffs, throw that Wixwell shield faster, and that may be enough. That may be enough. So I do think a slow tune can work. However, if you want to go faster, that's going to be better off. You're going to be better off with that. I do think there are some champions to consider. Um, I would highly recommend, if you, have, if you have her, you could think about Lydia. Lydia can get you a 2 to 1 speed tune on her own. If you don't have Lydia, but you have Elva, Elva's going to get you a 2-to-1 speed tune on, your, on her own, and she also has the speed aura, so that's going to be very helpful. So I do think that's an option. Um, I think the high Katoon speed aura is, like, the high Katoon 2-to-1 team is going to be tricky. Uh, you need a block debuffs champion, so if you have Brogni, it's fine, but if you don't have Brogni, I think you have to have Geo. I think you have to have Geo in that last spot, or else it's not going to work. Um, or Corvus and Geo, or something. You know, you need some mitigations. Maybe Duchess. Um, Thailand Ix Ixlamore might work. Might work, by the way. He does have a passive that gives you 10% decreased damage uh, mitigation with en for enemies under HP burn. He also has an increased defense and an ally protection. So he's pretty tanky. Um, but I do think ally protection could get you in trouble, so watch out for that. As far as counterattackers go, I definitely think Martyr is the best of the counterattackers because she's got not only the increased defense and counterattack, she's got a decreased defense on her A1 and she's got a decreased attack on her A2. So she will be giving you, you know, that AoE counterattack uh, permanently and the increased defense. Wixwell already has the increased defense, so you don't really need that, but she gives you the decreased defense and the decreased attack, which is really nice. Uh, and then she's also very tanky, so you're not going to have trouble getting the stats on her, but that really boosts your damage. And I don't think you need a damage boost. I really don't think damage is a huge consideration in this composition. As you saw from our result there, 200 million. We only need 72 million or 71 million, right? Really to get your one key ultra nightmare. 
So I think you have a ton of options. Geo's probably the best of, maybe the best entirely if you're going to go with a slow speed tune and you don't have Brogni, right? So it's Brogni, then, then Geo. I do think Corvus, Lydia, Elva, Lady Mikage, those are some champions who are synergized really well in this composition. And as you can see here, again, looking at Darren's score, got a little bit better at 219 million there. This does look like it's potentially a two to one composition, right? This is, in fact, um, High Katoon's two to one. There is no block debuffs buff here. Potentially, it's possible. It's possible that he speed tuned Demitha to cleanse the stun. Right, and if that if that's possible, or also potentially cleanse the slow, so it is possible to go fully affinity friendly with Demitha here, who does have a mini cleanse. Right, she can remove one debuff from every champion, so this could be full affinity friendly. I don't know, or it could just be that it's one of the affinities that works with High Katoon. I'm not sure, but as you can see, you know, a two to one ratio team only doing a little bit more damage. Right, only a little bit more damage. It's missing a weaken, um, and it's missing the Brog. And that's probably a factor too. He's got that HP burn and, and all that stuff going on. So you have some options here. Check them out. Let me know in the comments below. What team are you trying out right now? What have you learned? What's working? What's not working? Put it in the comments so everybody can see it. And we can kind of whittle this down. I'm going to come back with one more video. I am going to crush this thing. I'm, I'm shooting for a billion damage. I think there might be a team that I can put together that's going to get a billion damage. I'm going to try but we should get, be able to get at least 500 million. I'm very confident about that. So check back for that video. It's just gonna be a fun video to put together to see how far we could put the, push this comp. But I think, you know, again, you have some budget options here. Go back, check out this video, check out yesterday's video if you're looking for more information on the Infinity Comp like theory. And yeah, good luck. Good luck putting together your Wixwell composition. I hope you get it. Get your one key ultra nightmare going and uh, in, enjoy reaping the rewards of all of those awesome clan boss chests. And uh, yeah, hopefully get yourself some, some sacred shards, some legendary tomes. It's a good time. All right, that is it for me today. I know it's been a long one. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. I have been Cole Red, and I will see you in another video soon.